In this video, we're going to talk about an introduction to simple linear regression. We're going to use this to begin to lay a foundation for um, regression models and what they are in general. So simple linear regression can be used when our y variable is numeric or continuous, and our x variable is also numeric or continuous. Although in fact, the x variable can actually be categorical or a factor. Okay, but we'll, we'll get to that later. We'll start with the kind of conventional intro where x and y are both numeric variables. To work through the concepts, we're going to work with this example here. So we're going to look at the relationship between x being the gestational age of a baby and y being their head circumference measured in centimeters. Okay, so this data is looking at gestational age and head circumference for 39 low birth weight babies. If we were to calculate Pearson's correlation for this data, we'd find that it's going to come out to be 0.78. But one thing about the um, correlation coefficient is that it only helps describe the direction and strength of association. So here we can see there's a positive association. Right? As x increases, y increases. And this tells us something about the strength of the linear association. But it doesn't allow us to um, say anything about the effect of x on y. So for example, every time gestational age increases by one day, what do we expect to happen to the head circumference? Or if we want to build a model in a predictive sense, use the gestational age to try and estimate what the head circumference will be. So Pearson's correlation is a useful measure for summarizing an association, but it's quite limited. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to build up the idea of how we can model y as a linear function of x. Okay, that's what linear regression is all about. So let me just draw a line here to try and describe what I mean by that. We can try and fit a line through this that helps us say, for a given x value, what do we think the y value is? Okay, so this is our, our first encounter of using the term model. A lot of the stuff we talked about earlier, um, t-test, two-sample t-test, ANOVA, chi-square test, all these can be thought of as very simple models. But this is the first time we're actually going to really start to explore um, the concept of modeling. Okay, so it's important to start off with a, a few notes here. The first is a, a quote from a, a relatively well-known statistician, George Box. And he had said, all models are wrong, but some are useful. Okay, and I think this makes a great point in that all models, okay, and, and for the most part, all theory, okay, they're oversimplifications of reality okay, that end up magnifying or highlighting some aspects and ignoring others. Okay, so here, when we build this model to describe a relationship between gestational age and head circumference, we're ignoring other certain factors. Um, we're ignoring, I guess, biological variability. We're ignoring things like the um, age of the mother or father, what's the weight of the mother or father, or probably an important one, what's the head circumference of the mother or father. So the point is that we're ignoring some aspects and we're going to try and highlight some others. What we're going to try and do here is we're going to start to build up simple linear regression and we're going to use it as a foundation for understanding regression models in general. Later, after an intro stats course, you tend to move into um, stuff like generalized linear models where you start to learn about logistic regression models, Poisson regression models, maybe survival models or mixed effects models, these different sorts of things. And these are all just a step up from what simple linear regression is. So what we want to do is lay a good foundation for understanding what is regression, what are the important concepts, you know, what are the interpretations, and what are the limitations, these sorts of things. And we can use that as a really good foundation for understanding all the higher level models. Okay, in some sense, all of these regression models try and model y as some function of x or x variables. So again, we're going to use this to set a foundation. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by introducing just some of the terminology and some of the concepts around simple linear regression. So first, what I'm going to do is just label um, one of the observations here. We're going to pick on this one here. And for this one, this we label xi. This is the observed x value for person i. And this here, we label yi. It's the observed y value for person i. Right, so for this baby, here's their observed gestational age and their observed head circumference. We can also use the regression line to start to try and estimate y values. Right? So for this particular individual here, at 180 days of gestation, our model would estimate that their head circumference is roughly 25. Okay, that's what we would predict or estimate it should be. 
So we're going to label this y i hat, right? Again, hat to indicate that it's an estimated value. Or we can also label it the mean, right? And again, hat to indicate it's an estimated mean of y given x. In a moment, we'll differentiate between these two and what we mean by y i versus mu of y given x, but give it a moment and we'll get to that. The next thing we want to label here is this difference here. This is the distance between the ob observed y value for this individual and their estimated y value. Okay, so this distance here, we're going to label EI. Okay, it's the error or the residual. It's the difference between the observed y and the predicted or estimated y. Okay, it can be written yi minus yi hat. The difference between the observed y value and the predicted or the estimated y value. So this gets called a error or a residual. Okay, there is a slight difference between the two. Um, the difference is that the term error is generally reserved for kind of the theoretical errors. And when it's an observed error for a set of data, we call it a residual. But for the most part, the term error and residual tend to get used interchangeably. Um, very similar to the concept of a standard deviation and a sample standard deviation. Right? One is the theoretical one, one is the observed one for a sample of data, but they're the exact same conceptually. Okay, so for the most part, you're going to hear error and residual used interchangeably. Now, let's label the um, regression line that we fit. This here is the line that we fit, and we'll get to um, talking about how we choose this line. But first, we can label this as y i hat, or the estimated mean of y given x, is b naught plus b one x. And this b naught being the y intercept, and b one being the slope of the line. So in order to define a line, we need to give it um, some point on the line, as well as the slope, okay, or the rate of increase for the line. The points we choose are the y-intercept. We'll get to talking about what that is in a moment, but to say it quickly, it's where the line crosses the y-axis at x equals zero. So let's take a moment here to talk about the difference between labeling this as yi or mu of y. We can think of this line as either modeling individuals, so the predicted value for an individual, so for a baby of 180 days gestation, we predict, okay, we estimate that their head circumference will be about 25 centimeters. We can also think of this line as modeling the estimated mean of the population. For babies of 180 days gestation, we estimate that the average head circumference is going to be 25 centimeters. We tend to, to estimate that people are going to take on the mean value. Okay, so this line we can think of as representing predicted values for individuals or estimating the mean for a population. Now, there is a slight difference between the two, and we're going to build up to that and talk a bit more about it later. That mainly has to do with the estimate of the variability around each of these. Okay, there's going to be more variability in the estimate of individuals' head circumference than the mean for a population. Okay, but we'll, we'll build our way up to that. Some other important notes. If you reach back to um, things you may recall from earlier training in math, sometimes the equation for a line gets written as y equals mx plus b. And so here, b being the intercept, m being the slope. Um, another important note just to add in there, sometimes when you look at different sources, different instructors, different textbooks, different things, sometimes this gets written as a plus b of x, a being the intercept, b being the slope. Okay, so the notation I'm going to stick to using is b naught for the intercept, b1 for the slope. Okay, but just a note, you do see different, uh, slightly different notation used. A separate topic that um, is not going to fit into this video, but something that, that should be explored later, is how we choose the best line. Well, how we define the best line, and then how we choose that. Okay, the, the quick version now to say the key terms is we use something called the method of least squares. Here we try and minimize the sum of squared error. 
We can explore that concept later. This ends up being the same as using a method of maximum likelihood. And again, that's a topic beyond the scope of this simple intro video, but something that um, is worth exploring later. So for now, let's just suppose that the equation for the line, our choice for the best line, comes out to be yi hat, okay, or the estimated mean of y given x, 5.06 plus 0 0.11 times x. 0 0.11 times the gestational age plus 5.06 is going to give us the predicted head circumference for a baby or the estimated mean for that value of x. Now let's talk about um, the slope as well as the intercept for this line. So first, let's get to the slope. The slope which we label B1, um, in terms of a formula, comes out to be the correlation times the standard deviation of the y values, of the head circumferences, over the standard deviation of the x values, the standard deviation of the gestational ages. This came out to be 0.11 centimeters. An important note, we don't really want to focus on plugging into formulas. Okay? You're um, probably not going to spend much time in your life trying to calculate the slope and the intercept for a regression line by hand. But the reason that I show this formula is to get some um, intuition into um, what the slope for the regression line is or how it's being estimated. So you can notice here that the slope is essentially the correlation, right, the measure of association between x and y, but it gets scaled by the standard deviation of y over the standard deviation of x. Okay? And if we think about this for a moment, suppose we change the unit okay, of gestational day gestational age from days, suppose we change it to weeks. Okay, what would happen? The 210 days sitting here becomes 30 weeks. Right? So if we were to redo this plot, instead of using x in days, using x in weeks, the 210 days is going to scale all the way back here to 30 weeks. Right? The plot's going to shift up, the slope of the line is going to shift up. Okay? The correlation is going to be the same. Right? Correlation between x and y is independent of units. So this slope here is essentially taking the correlation, but building in the scale of x and the scale of y, okay, the units of x and y. What this ends up, um, the interpretation of the slope, is it tells us the change in y for a one unit change in x. So to say that in words, what it's telling us is every time the gestational age increases by one day, we associate that with an increase of 0.11 centimeters in head circumference. Every time x goes up by 1, what do we expect to happen to y? Each additional day of gestation is associated with an increase of 0.11 centimeters in the head circumference. Now, let's talk about the y-intercept. In terms of a formula, the intercept, b naught comes out to be the mean of y minus the slope times the mean of x. If you work this out um, numerically, we find that it comes out to be 5.06 centimeters. Okay, and again, the interpretation of this is the y-intercept tells us the estimated y-value for x equals 0. Or what's the value of y when x equals 0? Right, again, where does the line cross the y-axis? at x equals 0. Okay, so um, in our particular example, this would be telling us you know, what's the estimated head circumference for a baby of 0 days gestation. Now, you're probably going to notice that doesn't really have a meaningful interpretation. right? What's the, the size you know, of a head circumference for a baby who's um, been in a stomach for 0 days? Right? It, it doesn't exist. So the intercept does not always have a meaningful interpretation. And here it's because we haven't even observed data in the range of x equals 0. So it doesn't really make sense to interpret you know, what's a y value for x equals 0 when we have no idea. Right? We've only observed x values of 160 or larger. We can um, give the intercept a more meaningful interpretation by doing something called centering the um, x variable. Again, that's a topic beyond this video. Um, we can explore that separately. But essentially what it, what it involves doing is 
labeling some other point in here as being the zero observation. So if we were to center it around two, that would be like calling, sorry, center around 200, calling 200 days zero. And then our intercept would be, where's the line cross the um, y-axis at x equals zero? But again, that was kind of a very quick explanation. We'll explore the concept of centering separately. So there's all sorts of reasons for building a regression model. Um, for now, we just want to introduce the concepts of a regression model and some of the important parts. What is the slope? What's the intercept? What are some of the interpretations of these coefficients? Uh, and later we'll get up to building, building up to um, goals for regression models. But let's do a very quick overview of that now. So um, breaking into two broad classes, the goals for our model, one thing we might want to do is estimate the effect of x on y. Okay, so that might be our focus. And that essentially means we're really interested in this slope term here, estimating and interpreting this. Right? What is the effect of x on y? Every time gestational age goes up by one day, what happens to the head circumference? Right? It, we estimate it goes up by 0.11 centimeters. So this sometimes gets called um, an effect size model or estimating the effect of x on y. A separate focus is a predictive model. So we may really want wanting to be building a model to try and predict y, right? Give us an x value as an input, predict what y will be. So let's take a look at doing that. Here, if we want to predict the y value, 5.06 plus 0.11 times the gestational age of 180. So I'm going to use 180. Right? For 180 days gestation, what do we estimate or predict the head circumference to be? If you work that out, it's going to come out to 24.9 centimeters. Right? So 480 days gestation, we predict that the head circumference will be 24.9 centimeters. Okay, so we'll expand later on the kind of competing goals. Are we really trying to estimate the effect of X on Y, or is our focus more predictive and trying to predict the outcome? Um, when we get to multiple linear regression and including multiple X variables, the way we build the model and the variables we select will depend, um, will be different. It will depend on is our ultimate goal to predict the outcome, or is our ultimate goal to get an unbiased estimate of the slope or the effect of X on Y. But we'll build up to that later. Like all of these approaches, there are some necessary assumptions for um, building a linear regression model. Um, we'll explore those separately. Okay, separately, we'll look at what are the assumptions for um, this model, how can we check the assumptions, as well as what can we do if some of the assumptions aren't met? How can we try and address violations, or what are alternative approaches we might try using? Um, a final note is that it's worth noting that linear regression is an absolutely huge topic. Okay? It can be a course or multiple courses on its own. So really what we want to do here is explore the idea of what is linear regression, what are some of its uses, some of the important components, and we'll slowly build onto it as we progress through things. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel. Share our videos. Stick around, guys, because we got lots more.